So if the silly boldface definition questions, SBD questions, don't really need an explanation, and if the basic outline questions, the BO questions, were already taken care of quickly in another video, then what about the harder ones, the three-point questions that are going to be on every quiz as well? Well, here's some examples that are come from the beginning of chapter one. A question like a use your brain question, what is the value of a college degree? A question like a don't miss this question, what is economics? Another UYB question, what does counterintuitive mean? And another DMT question, what standard do economists use to evaluate? My suggestion is that you stop here and try to answer these questions from your notes. See if you can figure out what the answers are from the answers from the notes that you've already taken on chapter one. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so did you really pause it? Did you really try? And if you didn't, I suppose there's nothing I can do about it because in this sort of flipped version of our classroom, you and I aren't in the same place and I can't keep you honest. You've got to keep yourself honest. So, what about that first UYB question, the use your brain question, what is the value of a college degree? The answer I'm looking for is at least $900,000. And if your immediate reaction is, what? I never saw $900,000 listed anywhere in this chapter. Well, of course not. It's not that kind of a question. This is a use your brain question. They showed you a bunch of numbers about the value of a college degree. One of them was $1.2 million for anybody who goes just to high school. A college degree is going to assume that you went to high school. And so all the benefits of that high school degree come from the high school degree, not the college degree. The basic college degree will get you $2.1 million in lifetime earnings. And so the difference between the two the $0.9 million, which translates into $900,000, would be the answer. And we say at least $900,000 because you could make more for higher degrees. Does that make sense? What about the next question? The don't miss this question, what is economics? Now, you may have gotten a bunch of different little phrases that come up from time to time because the chapter uses three or four different ways to describe what economics is. But when they show you something like the study of unintended consequences, here, in a regular paragraph, because this highlighter, of course, wasn't in your book, I've highlighted it here to show you that it was hiding in plain sight, so to speak. There's no bold face, there's no italics, there's no pretty purple ink that they show you as a neon sign to tell you to write it down. It's camouflaged by regular type. And when they tell a thinking person, hey, here's the best definition, then why wouldn't you write this down? And as a matter of fact, have that be the only thing you write down if you felt like it. The study of unintended consequences is the best decision, the best definition. And so I hope that you didn't miss that as you took your notes. All right, getting back to other questions like the use your brain question, what does counterintuitive mean? Well, you just saw that word counterintuitive, now without the highlighter, and there it is. If we zoom in nice and big. If they tell you that economics is often counterintuitive and it's right by the definition of economics, then an educated adult would look up what it means. Intuitive means your intuition, your gut. And so counterintuitive would mean contrary to your gut or to your immediate reaction. In other words, lots of times in economics, what people think is the right answer, just as an educated, oh, everybody knows this, is actually wrong. Remember my quotation on my home screen? When economics and common sense conflict, common sense, your gut, is wrong because economics is often contrary to it. And then finally, what about that last, don't miss this question, what standard do economists use to evaluate? The answer is, do the benefits outweigh the costs? Economists drive people crazy all the time by saying they want to know the costs and the benefits of something if you want their advice on what to do. And even though I've highlighted it with my highlighter here again, you can tell that in your book, 
Here was the answer, hiding in plain sight. There aren't any bold-faced letters, there aren't any italics, there's no outline point, but an educated person who's reading this goes, oh, wow, that seems to sum up what economists say. And so you should know that's the standard they look at any time. The question is, can you answer questions and get answers like these?